Hi, everybody. It's Tamara Kelly from MooglyBlog.com, and I'm super excited to be joining you live today on the Yarnspirations Facebook page. Since we are live, I'm just going to take a moment here right as we're beginning to refresh the page here on my little laptop in front of me so that I can see any of your questions or comments as we go. So today, as you can see in front of us, we're going to be working with Lily Sugar and Cream. Looks like I've been able to get the video up. It looks like we're live. So go and hit and hit that like button for us and let us know where you're watching from. So as I said, I'm Tamara Kelly from Moogly. And today I am here to, with you, make the Lily Sugar and Cream Crochet Bobble Face Scrubbers. This is a really fun and simple pattern with the popcorn stitch, one of my favorites right here that adds a ton of texture. These are great for replacing washcloths or even those cotton rounds that are disposable. These are washable. Lily Sugar and Cream goes right in the washer and dryer. So you can make up a dozen or so of these, throw them in a lingerie bag, throw them in the wash, and just make a green choice for yourself. So you'll notice here as well on the pattern that one ball makes five scrubbers. So this is also a great stash buster. If you're like me, you love using Lily Sugar and Cream, you've got little bits left over. This is the perfect project for this. So let's go ahead and get started. In addition to the yarn today, I will be using a USG four millimeter crochet hook. This is one of the Susan Bates twist and locks. So it's got the insertable heads for all the different sizes. Let me get that back in there. There we go. Alrighty. So in the spirit of using up our odds and ends, I've got some leftover at Lily and Sugar and Cream right here that I'll go ahead and use. Good morning again. Thank you to everyone who's joining us live today. So you can see the written pattern right here in front of us. This is a really simple pattern. It's only four rounds and it also includes a chart. So if you love using charts or if you'd like to learn to use charts, this is a great pattern to do that with. It's got the key right here. And we start right off where it says one and then there's row two, three, and four. So that will help you read that. But we've also got the written instructions to follow along with. So I'm just going to set this off to the side here where I can still read along with it. Pull up my yarn and we'll go ahead and get started. Now this pattern begins with a chain of four and I'm going to do something a little different than you probably usually do when you start a chain of four. Most of the time we start by putting a slip knot in our, um, in our yarn or on our hook, however you want to phrase it, right? We make that slip knot and then we begin chaining. For a project like this, where it's something we're literally talking about rubbing against your face, which is a very delicate area, I want to make sure to eliminate as many knots as possible. So rather than putting a slip knot on my hook, what I'm going to do instead is just loop it over as if I'm starting to make a slip knot. And if I put my hook in there from the back, you can say it just create, see, it just creates a little loop there. I can hold on to this tail or even hold on to that first chain, if you will, the active loop on my hook that will become the first chain and just go ahead and start chaining. Now I want to make sure to make that first loop a little big. There we go. So we don't accidentally tighten it up. If we pull down on this tail, it will tighten up and essentially become a knot. But we just want to hold it open there and just work gently. This will, we can weave in this end. It will be just fine without that knot there. It won't cause our crochet stitches to become undone at all, but it will eliminate that little extra bump that we're rubbing against our faces essentially with this project makes it a little bit softer to the face. So here I've gone ahead and chained four. That's how we begin. And then we work 11 double crochets into the fourth chain from the hook. So that's that very first chain back here that we made. That's why we want to make sure to hold it open a little bit so that it doesn't close up on us and make it impossible for our hook to get back in there. Of course, if it happens, you can just chain one more. So let's go ahead and put our 11 double crochets in that very first chain we made. You can work into whatever part of the chain you prefer. I usually like to start working into that underneath hump, but we're gonna be basically going in a circle all the way around, so it doesn't really matter. It's just whatever works best for you. So we just go right into that chain and make 11 double crochets. Now, if you're an advanced crocheter, if you've been crocheting for a while, you may have tricks you like to do. Maybe you prefer to use a magic circle to start with. You could absolutely do that for this project. If you would prefer to use a double crochet substitute instead of chaining up essentially for that first double crochet, then you can do that too. The main point is that round one should have a total of 12 double crochets or 11 double crochets and a double crochet substitute by the time you get to the end. So however you like to make those, like I say, most crocheters eventually come up with their favorite method for starting a flat circle. 
So you can absolutely do whichever method you like, as long as you end up with 12 double crochets at the end. Now, I can't count and talk at the same time, so let's go back and see how many we've got. Now, those three chains that we didn't work into, remember worked into that first one, those are three chains. For this project right now, this is going to count as our first double crochet. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I need one more. Oh, put that in the backwards. There we go. One more double crochet. And then if you'd like, you can take that tail and sort of shrink up that first chain if you want to. Or you can also go back and close that up a little bit, sewing, sewing it with that tail. I did the chain four method here, and I just used that tail to cinch up that center as much as I wanted to when I wove in those ends. So after that, we're going to go ahead and slip stitch to the top of that chain four or whatever double crochet substitute you wanted to use right there. There we go. Make sure you work into the top of that chain or double crochet substitute and not that double crochet. We want to have 12 stitches that we can work into for round two. So that is what it should look like basically at the end of round one, 12 double crochets all worked into a circle. For round two, it says to start with a chain two that does not count as your first stitch. It's going to count as just a turning chain. And this is a turning chain for a half double crochet. So this is where I'm a little different. When I make a half double crochet, I prefer to just pull up on that loop and make a chain one for my turning chain. If you do decide to do the chain two for a turning chain for a half double crochet, I recommend that you make those a little bit tighter. You're not going to have to work back into them at all, but I find if you make the two a little bit loose, then they get a little bit leggy, a little bit too tall. So like I say, for me personally, I prefer to just chain one before a row of round of half double crochet, but you can do whichever works best for you and your personal gauge. After we've got that turning chain made, we simply work two half double crochets in each stitch around. So there's one and two. So we want to make sure to work two half double crochets in each stitch around. That means if round one had 12, round two will have a total of 24 stitches. So we're just increasing in every stitch around with half double crochets here. Now, sometimes when you're working with cotton yarns like this, it wants to split a little bit on the hook. So I just pull those stitches back out and redo them. There we go. So hi everybody again, thank you for joining us. If you're watching live, let us know, do you prefer to start with the magic circle or do you like to start with a chain up method or even chain and then join in a circle? There really are so many ways and most of the time it's just the designer's personal preference of what they might like best. Now I need to pull up some more yarn here. Remember, you never want your yarn to be pulling tightly off your skein while you're crocheting. You want to be able to con control the tension with your hands going to just give you a better result here at the end. So I am just working my way around here, putting two half double crochets in each stitch. I hope you guys are having a good summer so far. It's hard to believe it's August already. Time to start thinking about back to school, eventually. <laughs> so I hope you are enjoying your summer break if you get one. So we're just going to continue around working two double cro or excuse me two half double crochets in each stitch. This is round 2. And if you want to, while I'm making these stitches here, since we are alive, take a peek at that chart. You can see hopefully here that the half double crochets are these little T's without a line in the middle. Those are the stitches that we're making right now. That is the universal crochet symbol chart symbol for half double crochets. So the great thing about learning charts, and I really love patterns like this for learning charts because you can really kind of see row by row and you've got the written instructions as well. But the great thing about reading charts is that then you can, it just really opens up a whole world of crochet patterns. You can take your favorite yarn inspirations yarns and make patterns from all over the world, which is really, really pretty exciting and really just opens up so many other options. So let's see here. I'm gonna make sure that I'm not working into my slip knot here, excuse me, my slip stitch that we joined with last time. So let me straighten that back up a little bit here. 
We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So I do have one more to go. Just want to make sure I was in the right spot first there. There we go. And then, of course, we just join with a slip stitch to that very first half double crochet we made for the round. There we go. You can see mine wants to cup up a little bit, but once I use this tail end to pull that center together, it really does flatten out pretty well. So that is basically what it should look like here after round two. So that takes us on to round three. So let's see, I've we've got a great tip here from Candy Benz. She says she's discovered tension crochet rings that get so hot, it gets so hot and humid there um, that the ring really helps with tension. So that is a great tip, especially in August. It's certainly hot in many places. And if you find your yarn is sticking to your hands and it messes with your tension, a crochet ring can be a great option. Now, round three begins with a chain four, which is going to count as a double crochet and a chain one. So again, you could use a double crochet substitute and then chain one if you prefer, or you can just do the chain four. So let's go ahead and do the chain four, since that's what our pattern says. I'm not gonna worry too much about the first two chains here, but the third one, I wanna make sure that it's a little bit looser and bigger, because I know I'm gonna have to slip stitch back to it when I come back around. So that'll be the top of the double crochet. And then our fourth chain will act as our chain one. So then what we get to do for round three, it's the funnest round of all, this is where we get to make our popcorn stitches. And we're going to be making 12 popcorn stitches with double crochets and chains in between. So let's go ahead and get started on that together. Our first stitch is considered worked. It's got the double crochet and the chain one. We're going to make a popcorn stitch in the next stitch. Let me bring this a little bit closer to the camera here and we're gonna work a popcorn stitch together because this might be a new one for you. It's a really fun stitch. You can see it has a ton of texture and it's a great bobble alternative. When we work bobbles, they push off to the other side of the fabric and popcorns pop out towards us. So to begin, this is a five double crochet popcorn that can be made with different numbers of double crochets. This one includes five. So we simply yarn over and work five double crochets all into the indicated stitch. So the next stitch in our case here, so there's one and two and three and four and five. You can see I've worked those all into the same stitch. Oops, let me finish that last one a little better there. Get the yarn back on there on my hook properly. There we go. Okay. Let's get that nice and centered there. So you can see there's five double crochets. If I just left it there, it might be considered a shell. They're all worked into that same stitch, but one special move turns it into a popcorn stitch. You can see I've pulled my hook out of the stitch. I just lay, what I like to do is I lay that active loop over the non-hook hand forefinger, <laughs> basically the hook, hand that's not holding my hook. I secure that loop, just put it over my finger real quick. Then I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to insert in the top of the very first of those double crochets I made. So right under those top two loops. Then I can just drop that active loop right back on my hook. Of course, I wanna pull down and tighten it up. And then I'm just going to pull that active loop right on through the top of that first double crochet. Like that. And that's it, that's a popcorn stitch, you can see. A bunch of them right there. They have that little kind of opening at the top there. You can see there's five double crochets there. It pops out right towards us. So after we make the popcorn stitch, we chain one and double crochet in the next stitch. Then we chain one and popcorn again. And that's going to be our repeat all the way around. So let's do that again. We're going to work five double crochets all into that very next stitch. So there's two and three. Let me get that one started again here. We are working with a smaller hook than I would normally use with this yarn, but that's very much on purpose. For a pattern like this, you want your stitches to be a little bit tighter and stiffer. We're not really looking for drape here. Um, we're looking for some good texture. So working with a slightly smaller hook can be a little bit challenging sometimes, but it gives us the fabric we want for this project. So here again, we've got one, two, three, four, five double crochets. I dropped the hook, the loop rather, off onto my finger. 
I insert my hook right under the top two loops of the first of those double crochets. And a little hint here, make sure you don't come all the way back to that double crochet you worked before the chain. Just go back to that very first of the five, insert your hook, drop the loop right back on the hook, tighten it up, and pull it right on through. There we go. Then we chain one, double crochet in the next stitch, and look closely to make sure you don't accidentally skip a stitch there. The popcorns are kind of big, so they kind of want to try and hide the stitch next to them sometimes. There we are. Then chain one and popcorn again. Go into the next stitch and make five double crochets. We're going to be making 12 of these total. So if you need to see it a little bit slower again, definitely let me know in the chat. So there's three, four, five. And I pull up on that loop, drop it over my finger, find the first of those five, insert my hook under those top two loops, drop the loop back on my hook, and pull it on through. So if we go back to our chart here, there we go, you can see that right there, sort of that little, well, for lack of a better term, bobble looking thing, it looks like the little balls here, those are our popcorn stitches. The symbol for a double crochet has a little line through the center there, just one. And all gathered up there, you can see it's worked into one stitch, and it's one stitch at the top. So that is the crochet symbol chart version of a popcorn. So let me chain one again, and double crochet in the next stitch. Again, make sure that you get that very next stitch. It really likes to hide behind the popcorn. Then we chain one again, and popcorn in the next stitch. So there's one, and two, <clears throat> excuse me, and three, need to pull up some more yarn, there we are, and four, and five, pull up that loop, drop it on your finger, find the first stitch, go under both of those top two loops, unless you're following a different pattern and it states otherwise, we go under both of those loops to make a popcorn, pull our loop on through, and another one is made. It's just so satisfying. I really love making popcorns. They feel like a little bit of immediate gratification. And it's a great option, like I say, if you're, you know, ever want to play with these stitches, just remember a bobble faces away, a popcorn faces towards you, and you're going to have some great options there no matter what sort of pattern you're making. So I'm making another popcorn here. We've got our double crochet in between. It's three, four, and five, pull up our loop, drop it over our finger, find the first stitch of those five, put our hook in, drop the loop back on the hook, pull it down tight, and pull that loop on through. Chain one, double crochet in the very next stitch. Chain one again, and popcorn again. You can see we've got one, two, three, four, five made. Like I say, you should have 12 total when you go all the way around for this pattern. My yarn's trying to pull the written pattern right back into view here. But this is the third round of the Lily Sugar and Cream Crochet Bobble Face Scrubber. Another great stash busting pattern, craft fair pattern, gift giving pattern. It is hot out there for most of us right now. And if you want to work on something, you know, light, but you don't want to blanket on top of you, you know, or a big heavy scarf or something, I think in the summertime, projects made with Lily Sugar and Cream really are ideal, especially in the heat. I'm a big fan of them for summer crochet. And something like this, you know, it's very small, it's handheld, it's not going to rest on your lap you know, or across your body while you're trying to make it. It's also great for on the go. These are a wonderful road trip project. You can bring all your small balls in a bag and uh, just crochet these. You'll have this pattern memorized really in no time. I think by the time you've made one or two, you'll have it totally memorized. And then you can just whip these up, you know, as you're on the road, in waiting rooms, at the park with the kids, wherever you are. Let's see, we've got another five made here. Insert our hook. Drop the loop on, pull it through, Oop, there we are, chain one, 
double crochet in the next. So really by the time you've made one of these you will have become pretty darn good at popcorns. As you can see if you know how to make a double crochet stitch then you can absolutely make a popcorn stitch. So don't let when you see you know other stitches like this the popcorn stitch or other stitches that you haven't made before don't let them intimidate you because 99.9% .9 of the time in crochet it's just a little twist. It's one more twist on a stitch you already know and love. Popcorns are just double crochets with that one little loop pulled through right at the end. So please don't let those stitches intimidate you. Just take your time, find a YouTube tutorial if you need to, or come on over here to your inspirations, and someone will be able to help you because the great thing about crochet is how much these different skills and stitches really just build right on top of each other. So I am just chugging along here with your popcorns. Has anybody, let us know if you're trying the popcorn right now for the first time, how's it going? It, can, it feels very strange, but you know, once you make a double crochet and you pull that loop through, you're like, here it is. It's a whole new stitch and it just adds so much texture and interest to any crochet project. Let's see, have I made five this time? Yep, five. One, two, three, four, five. Insert my hook under that first one. Drop the loop back on my hook. Sometimes it wants to get a little wobbly. There we go. Pull it on through. Chain one, don't forget the chain one, double crochet in the next stitch and chain one again. And then bobble in the next stitch. We've only got a couple more here to make. So you can see we're doing this completely live and we're only 22 minutes in and I was a little chatty at the beginning. So you can see this is a really genuinely quick project. Let's see, somebody says this is one of their favorite stitches. Mine too, mine too. It's just so fun and simple. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Looks like our yarn got a little goofy there. Let me pull that last loop through again. Oop. There we go. We're just gonna do that last double crochet again because I don't like the way that one wrinkled up on our yarn a little bit. So I'll straighten that out. Like I say, we're working with a little bit smaller hook because we want our stitches to be really tight for this one. There we are. Pull that on through. Chain one, double crochet in the next. Chain one, and let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we just have two popcorn stitches left to go. You can see we've hardly used any of our yarn. This was already a partially used ball. So with each ball has, we'll say, 120 yards in it, you get five scrubbers out of each ball. It says each scrubber uses approximately 23 and a half yards of yarn. So that's pretty specific. So it doesn't take much at all. So there's two. And one person, and I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, says, I learned it with the Hugs and Kisses blanket. That is a beautiful pattern and a great example of some place to use some popcorns. Definitely create some beautiful texture there. So there's our five double crochets. My yarn wants to get a little bit caught. There we go. Insert our hook in the top one. Drop that loop on and pull it through. Our last repeat here, we chain one. Double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one again, and then we have a popcorn in that very last stitch. Oop. Try not to catch the other popcorn with the hook there. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, one thing I wanted to address, and it popped up here in the comments a little bit, if you do decide to start this with the magic circle rather than with the chain four, again, totally your choice. If you're an experienced crocheter, you can use whatever start you prefer. Um, I do recommend when you go to weave in those ends that you make sure, and this isn't a magic circle, but we'll pretend for a second it is, that you weave in those ends and pull it tight, but weave it in in different directions and really weave it in to your fabric. Don't just weave it the yarn in one direction. It can open up. Um, if it's a yarn where you can split it, we've already seen this yarn, we can split it a little bit. Use that to your advantage when you're weaving in your ends and split that 
yarn as the end itself as you're weaving it in and that will help lock it in a whole lot better. So I've made my last popcorn here for round three. I'm gonna chain one and then I need to join to the top of that third chain. Remember we started with the chain four here or a double crochet substitute and then chain one. You wanna slip stitch to the top of your double crochet substitutes, whether that was the chain three or something you added yourself. We just wanna finish up with a slip stitch to that first double crochet essentially. So this is about what it should look like at the end of round three, which leaves us with just one more round to go, round four. And we can bring in our chart again to look at that. And you see round four has just these little plus signs. That is our symbol for single crochet. So the last round is all single crochet. So I'm gonna pull up a little bit more yarn here and we can finish this up together in these last few minutes that we're together for our lunch and learn. So I joined to that first double crochet or double crochet substitute. So for round four, we're gonna chain one, single crochet right back in the top of that third chain or whatever you use there to begin your round. There we go. And then we single crochet in the chain one space. And then single crochet in the top of the popcorn. And this can be hard to find. Personally, I like, I think it's easiest to go under wherever you like to put it. You can put your hook right there, or you can try and put your hook right there. This is officially the chain though that comes after the popcorn. If you wanna put it in the top of the popcorn, if you can see that little space right here, that is the top of the popcorn itself. So we wanna go right there, Oop, and get that centered again, there we go, for a single crochet. And then we wanna come over here to this chain space. You could go into the chain itself, but no need to. It's a lot faster to just go into the space underneath the chain. Then we're back at the beginning of that repeat again. There's another double crochet. So we single crochet in that double crochet, single crochet in the chain space, you just put your hook right between the post of that stitch and the popcorn itself. Then find the top of the popcorn. Remember, that's that little hole right there. Almost seems like it's off to the side, but that's the nature of crochet stitches. Put a single crochet there. You can just use your thumbs and fingers to really push that popcorn right out of the way. It's just yarn. It won't break. Get your hook in there and put your single crochet right in there. Find your next double crochet single crochet in there. That brings us to a space, single crochet in the space, which takes us to a popcorn, single crochet in the popcorn. But remember, there's gonna be a space on the side of each stitch. We wanna make sure to put a single crochet in that space as well. So each stitch and each chain space gets a single crochet of its own for round four. Now, I haven't made it all the way around, but we are starting to run out of time here for our meeting today. So you can see right there just how nice of an edge that gives it as we work our way around. And you can see here on the finished one, <laughs> my hook's trying to roll away. You can see here on the finished one how that just gives it a really nice, well, finish. And of course, you wanna weave in your ends. Now, we did have a little bit of a bigger opening here in the center of the one we made live, and I'm not a huge fan of that, so let's go ahead and tighten that up together as our last thing before we go. I'm gonna put that on my yarn needle, and then when I've got a big opening like this, maybe I worked into a stitch or something, I do try and just pull on it and see. Now it wants to cooperate, it didn't before, but now it's cooperating and that stitch is starting to close up a little bit. It's not totally closed, but if we look at the picture, always a good idea to go back and reference the photo, they haven't totally closed theirs either. So that is absolutely fine. But just like when you make a magic circle, we want to make sure to weave in our ends in a couple different directions. So first I'll go one way. I'll go most of the way, if not all the way around that circle. This is something, especially a face scrubber, this particular project is something that, you know, is going to get used a lot. If it was a basket that sits on a shelf and nobody ever touches and it's just full of pretty things, then weaving in the ends securely might not be as big of a deal, right? Because no one's going to be messing with the fabric to work the ends out. But something like a face scrubber, where you're going to be actually rubbing it and using it, you want to make sure those ends are really in there. So now I've changed directions and I'm going back the other direction. And this needle 
is relatively blunt. I have some sharper ones here somewhere, usually. Let's see. Let me go through my little collection of yarn needles that I keep close by. This one, this one's a little bit smaller and therefore a little bit sharper. I think I've got some sharper ones somewhere else. But with a sharper one, let me switch out here. It's a little bit smaller, so it takes a little bit longer to get the yarn on the needle. There we go. With a sharper one, what you can do when you come back the other direction, we want to catch it, of course, another loop so that we don't just undo what we did. But with a sharp needle, you can actually sort of pierce and go through. I'm going to do it out here outside the fabric. If I go through that tail end itself as I'm weaving the end in, that is really going to help to lock in those ends. There we go. We'll get a little muscle behind it sometimes, but that will help quite a bit in weaving in those ends and making sure they don't come back out on you. Now, Lily Sugar and Cream, of course, is a great yarn. It's got a little bit of um, texture to it. It's smooth, but it's got a little bit of texture to it. If you're using something like Karen Simply Soft that's very silky, you want to keep weaving that end a little bit longer. Just basically the smoother the yarn, the longer the tail you need to weave in. Then, of course, you can trim that off. Continue working your single crochets all the way around. And before you know it, you'll have your Lily Sugar and Cream Crochet Bobble Face Scrubber. Right there is the free pattern. Again, you can get that on Yarnspirations.com. And I want to thank you so much for joining me today for this Yarnspirations Lunch and Learn. Have a great day, everybody, and be sure to check out Yarnspirations.com and Mooglyblog.com as well.